Well, good morning, and you join us at uh, Darnford Moor, uh, where we are adding additional um, tie rods. Uh, the sheep pole in here was installed about 20 years ago, so it, it stood up fairly well. Um, the issue is, though, that we need to add intermediate, uh, intermediate and longer tie rods. It was installed pretty much in accordance with what British waterways were doing at the time. And the issue that I think we've had here is that because the area wasn't in water, we've had uh, soil forces compressing on the one side, but now counterbalancing water pressure on the other side. Consequently, over, a, over the time of about 20 years, what's happened is the pile has tended to work its way out. So what we're doing here is we are digging out very carefully between the what was two metre centre and two metre long tie rods. What we're then doing is adding intermediate tie rods and longer tie rods. So we're creating three metre long tie rods with anchor, anchor poles at the back um, and we're putting them roughly every metre. So what we're now doing is making sure that the soil pressure is naturally supported, I suppose, by, by the ties. It's not reliant on the water on the opposite side, which we haven't yet got. So that's what we're doing. So we, as I say, we're gently digging out on the one side and then um, scraping a bit of a trench, um, putting a anchor pile in at the back and then adding, um, adding three metre long tie rods. Normally, um, we are trying to push the piles out, um, and so what we've what we've got here is where the there's such a great force um, that it's actually trying to bend the tie rod. So what we've done here, you can see, there's a um, there's a couple of meters of scaffolding tube, and that just makes sure that the 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 tie can can only distort within the within the inner diameter of the scaffolding so it, it it just keeps it more rigid and makes sure it can push apart
as you can see the guys are doing a uh, wonderful job adding the toys we're just digging them out one at a time and working our way down and then backfilling Good morning Paul, good to see you. Sunshine, first time for a long time, absolutely marvellous. And you'll see from the filming, there's five of us working here at Old Block 24, progressing the channel up towards Cricket Lane. We're coming to the point where we won't be able to do any more concreting for the bed of the canal uh, because we have obstacles in our way. One of them is the cottage behind me. We've got to ensure that our excavations don't impede the security, the foundations of that cottage. So we are going to be placing buttresses to support that cottage, whether it needs it or not. We want to be very much erring on the side of caution. So uh, that's why we're going to do the buttressing. We can't do that at the moment because the machine that uh, is doing that uh, work for us. Yeah, I think it's out of order and in any case is at Dartford Moors. In the meantime, the lads are preparing beds so that the last three sections of concrete can be laid and I'd anticipate that uh, those three sections will be laid probably this week or going into early next week as well. It's Monday morning and there's five of us on site, which is a great thing to uh, behold. I'm amazed at the amount of work that these lads can get through in a day. It's absolutely fantastic and they are a credit to uh, the volunteer force that we have at the Litchfield Canal Restoration Trust. At that, I'm going to go back to my excavator and start clearing a little more spoil so that they can get on digging out sandstone. Sandstone really is a bind at the moment. It's impeded our progress quite a lot. But it's been good to see you Paul. Thanks for calling in and drop in again anytime. Whether where there's water in it or not. Thank you Brian. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Bye Paul.
Let's leave that noise behind and take a walk through Borocop Locks Canal Park, where spring is not far away. Mm -hmm.